three, two, one, go. Level up, 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 level and you are here in my home kitchen in Brooklyn, New York, where we are about to cook raw and roasted cauliflower salad. This recipe has three simple steps and should take about 30 minutes. So the first time I encountered a raw cauliflower salad was at Barbudo in Lower Manhattan. I had never seen that before. Cauliflower instead of lettuce. It was weird, it was delicious, it was crunchy, and it was amazing. And then one day, fairly recently, I was eating at Fausto, which is a new restaurant in Brooklyn, and the chef, um, Aaron, made this raw and roasted cauliflower salad, and it completely blew my mind. I had never had anything with like so much depth and texture. At first, I didn't really even know what I was eating. It was like, is this a salad? Is this a cooked dish? It was so crunchy and incredible. I've been making it ever since. First and foremost, I want to gather all of our ingredients and have everything sensibly laid out. In a restaurant, we call this mise en place. It means having everything ready at a hand's reach for when you need it. Step one, we're going to cut our cauliflower and get it roasting. First and foremost, we're going to preheat the oven to 500 degrees. Very rarely does a recipe call for 500 degrees. That is as hot as it gets because we want to roast the cauliflower, which has got a lot of liquid in it, um, and get some color on it. If your oven only goes up to like 475, that's fine. Just turn it all the way up, but not on broil. Then we're going to clean and cut our cauliflower. We're actually going to cut these two different ways, but both of them, we need to remove this kind of like large bolster. One of them's got it, one of them doesn't. Um, and the easiest way to do that, if it's got this on there, is you can actually just take the whole cauliflower and just cut it in half. You can see where this guy just kind of cut it right off. So look at that. Look at how easy that was. That was amazing. If you didn't know how to do that, you're welcome. Um, and then what we're going to do is one of them we're going to turn into florets for roasting and the other one we're going to slice into slices that are going to become the salad. So it'll be nice because it's got a little bit of a different texture and look to each of them. Um, so here we go. For florets, what we want to do is basically cut our cauliflower into quarters. And rather than cut all the way through, which is going to give us this flat edge, I kind of cut and then I give it a little break so that you can see it kind of gives it the natural look to the pieces. We can cut at an angle this kind of like little bolster guy out. I'm going to consider that a bolster guy rather than a bolster gal. And then, mm. our idea here is that we want to get kind of even sized chunks. But if you've got a couple of little doodads, that's fine. It's not going to kill anybody. But we just kind of want to get nice bite sized pieces. And so I just grab them and I'll just kind of break them up into. And remember that these are going to roast, so they're going to lose some of their size. Um, they're going to get a little bit smaller. They're going to shrink. Shrinkage will occur. So again, we're just going to kind of, without being overly crazy about this, because you're going to see that these are going to kind of disappear. Mm. I feel like cauliflower is one of those recently rediscovered um, and until then underappreciated, very delicious, extremely healthy and inexpensive vegetables that is really versatile because as you can see we can kind of like serve it raw or we can serve it roasted or in this case we can do both at the same time people. Okay, so our first guy, 
Wow, that was bigger than I thought. So our first guy's ready. We're going to season him for roasting. Basically just olive oil. And the olive oil, you, you want to use a, a good amount of olive oil because the olive oil is going to coat and then it's going to get hot in the oven and it's going to fry and give it the color. Without, without the olive oil, it's really hard to get the kind of color on the cauliflower. It just kind of steams. Um, season it with salt and we're going to give her a toss. So now we're going to spread our cauliflower onto our roasting pan. Comme ça. That's French for like that. And we're going to reserve this bowl because we're going to actually make the salad in here. So no need to get rid of that quite yet. Ideally, your roasting pan is big enough that you can lay it out with some space between the cauliflower. If the cauliflower is kind of sitting on top of itself or touching a lot, what winds up happening is it doesn't get heat from all sides. The hot air doesn't circulate around it and it tends to steam. So instead of getting color, it'll kind of get mushy. Now, getting a little bit of cauliflower, color on the cauliflower can be a little tricky. So if yours comes out steamy, it's completely fine. It adds a little bit of roasted flavor and a nice color to the salad, but ultimately it's going to be delicious provided you don't get it really mushy and overcooked. So the, the number one thing is we don't want to cook it and like say, it's not got color yet. We're going to cook it for 45 minutes until it's like little burnt nubbins of nothing. You're better served to get it cooked properly and the color will come. If you're like me, you got one of these older ovens that doesn't circulate perfectly. The top of the oven, because heat rises, tends to be the hottest part. So I'm going to put it on the very top rack to try and ensure that it gets as much heat and as much color as possible. Those guys are going to roast for about 17 minutes, 15, after 15 minutes, I'll take a look at them. And that is the end of step one. Step two, we're going to make our vinaigrette and continue cutting the rest of the vegetables. So for this guy here, we're going to try and slice it. I want to get them as thin, as thin as possible. And if you happen to have one of those mandolins, this is a great time to use one. Um, if you don't, then what you can do is cut it into manageable sizes for yourself. And you're just going to kind of th as thinly as possible, kind of slice the cauliflower. And it should kind of break up into bite size, nice pieces. And some of them are going to be really small and some of them are going to be big and look really kind of beautiful on the plate. But again, if you have one of those mandolins, this is a great time to kind of pull it out. Okay, so once we've successfully cut our cauliflower, and if your chunks are a little thicker, that's completely fine because it's really crunchy and delicious. It's nice to have thin slices, but some thicker chunks, you can see mine aren't perfect. I've got some kind of thicker slices as well. So it's completely fine. We're gonna toss this right back in our bowl, in our mixing bowl, in our bowl. And, Then we're going to cut the rest of our ingredients, which are going to be our parsley and our green onions. So for the parsley, you know, this is a really rustic salad. There's going to be a bunch of crunch to it. So you can pick the parsley if you feel more comfortable with that. And it's nice to have some kind of like big leaves in there. But for me, a really fast and easy way to do this. I don't mind the parsley stems so long as they're finely cut. I feel like they leave a great flavor. And actually when I was working at French restaurants, 
um, they used to tell me to pick the parsley and save the stems. And I would ask them what to do with the stems. They'd say, we save them to put them in the soup. And I'd say, well, why do you use them for the soup? They say, because they have the best flavor. And I never understood why you would get the part with the best flavor out if you're trying to cook a delicious dish. Now, I understand why that happens, why they do that. But for me, if I can use the parsley stems in the dish that I'm making, it's way easier and I find it's very delicious. So in this case, we're gonna cut the top of the parsley off to kind of make some big leaves in our salad, just kind of like this, we just cut it right off. And then where there are less stems, we'll cut some thicker slices of parsley. And then as we get into the area where there's a lot of stem, I'm just gonna cut it really thinly. So I get the parsley, but the stems are really thinly cut so I don't get any big chunks of stem. And you'll see, when I sift through this, that there's quite a bit of stem in here. But if I take a stem out and I eat it, it's not offensive at all. It's actually kind of delicious. It's got a great texture and a, and a great flavor to it. So we can throw these right into our bowl with our cauliflower. We're gonna cut some scallions. And these guys, we can just remove the bolster or the, um, the root end. We just wanna shave it as finely as possible by the root end just to kind of not waste any of the actual edible vegetable. In order to cut these faster, I usually cut them in half and line them back up and then just make some slices. Now, in the restaurant, when people are first learning to slice scallions or green onions thinly, you know, the larger the bunch, the kind of harder it is. So I say start out with just kind of one or two and go very slowly and the speed will come. So start out with one or two very slowly and then as you get kind of more comfortable with it, you'll feel more comfortable kind of slicing a big bunch. Um, yeah, so when, we're, when we see people slicing, especially when we're slicing herbs or onions that have a kind of fairly sharp flavor and bruise easily, um, we're gonna, when we're at, we, it seems like we're just kind of chopping, but what you're really doing is slicing from the beginning back to the front of the knife. And even if you do it quickly, if you notice my hand moving forward and back, I'm slicing through. And actually a good way that you can tell what's going on is that if you slice, it should not hear much, but if you chop, and that crunching sound, and I can smell it immediately, is actually crushing the cell structure of the vegetable. And so if you were to actually look at these really close up, what you'll see is that the ones on the right, which were sliced, are kind of vibrant green and have like been cut through. The ones on the left, these ones were crushed and they're darker green and look a little bit wet. And that's because you've actually crushed the cell structure. The onion kind of juices have crushed through and started to seep out. And then that's when you get that really sharp flavor um, that starts to taste like old onions and um, it makes you your eyes water. So, scallions go in the bowl. Um, our vegetables are now prepped. We're gonna make our vinaigrette. So to make the vinaigrette, what we've got here is clove garlic or, or garlic cloves. And I want to um, just give this guy a, a, a crush to peel, which I feel like is the easiest way if you don't need a whole peel of garlic. So using the flat side of my knife carefully, I'm just gonna give it a little pound with my knife, which is going to loosen the skin so that the whole thing just peels off in one go. That's so fast, so easy. And voila, as they say in French with a V. Um, cut the little tiny bolster off I can give this a little tiny chop and then I'm gonna set this to the side. Um, anchovies are one of my favorite ingredients. They add a ton of rich flavor. Um, they're a little bit salty and they have something called um, free glutamates, which are really important chemical because when you mix them with salt, it makes monosodium glutamate they bond together to make MSG, which gives you umami or a really round, rich flavor, which is gonna enhance all the other flavors. So we're gonna use a few fillets of anchovies. Um, I love these 
olive oil packed anchovies. I have salt packed anchovies in my refrigerator. I'm a big anchovy guy, so I use a ton of anchovies. If you don't love the anchovy flavor, don't worry. The flavor won't actually come through in the final dressing. It'll just give it a richness, but you can always skip them if you need to. I'm gonna throw um, some salt on top of the anchovies, and then using the side of my knife, I'm gonna mash, I'm gonna chop through and then mash the anchovies and garlic, and almost like the salt will act almost like sandpaper to crush my anchovies and garlic together and create a paste. Um, and I, that's how I prefer to use anchovies and garlic in a vinaigrette um, whenever I'm serving them raw because what I don't want is to get like a big chunk of raw garlic or raw anchovy, which is when people kind of find it is too strong, too overpowering. Whereas if I smash it, I'm gonna get all that flavor, but I'm not gonna get any of the kind of like big raw pieces. So again, using the side of my knife carefully because there's a little olive oil, it's a little slippery, it's kind of in a pulling motion. Make our paste. A mortar and pestle would be a great tool for that. Um, one of those little garlic squeezing apparatuses would be an amazing tool for that. Um, you know, there are lots of different ways you could crush an anchovy. Uh, our anchovies are gonna go, our anchovies and garlic are gonna go right in our bowl. And then just because a really strong flavor, a little bit of a mess. I'm going to give ourselves a quick rinse with soap and water. Kind of get that raw garlic flavor. And one thing is really important whenever I'm working with raw garlic, um, it's, it's important to know that it flavors the cutting board. And so it's fine if I'm gonna be cutting other things that are gonna go into the same salad with the raw garlic, but if I'm going to now make something different, especially a dessert or a sweet that has no garlic in it, you absolutely need to scrub this down, clean and sanitize your board, because that garlic flavor will penetrate everything and you'll notice it and you'll be like, why does my delicious other thing taste like garlic? Making it less delicious. So, I should just get a digital watch, honestly. <laughs> Our cauliflower has been in the oven for some amount of time. It's been about 10 minutes. I can hear it sizzling, so I'm gonna give it a little peek because 500 degrees is quite hot. And notice how quickly we open and close the oven. The number one mistake that people make is they decide they're gonna take a look at what's going on in the oven. They open it up, they pull it out, and it's not ready, they put it back in. And by the time they've kind of done all that. They've cooled the oven down because it's been open, all the heat has gone out, and you're never gonna roast. So if you need to peek, give it a quick peek, but 15 minutes at least, so it's only been 10. We need another five minutes. Um, some capers, and here's the deal with the capers. We want to drain the capers, and the easiest way to drain our capers is just using our hand. We're gonna kind of pour them out into our hand, and you can see the capers stay in our hand, but the liquid falls through because of the um, waterproof nature of our fingers. None of the pickling liquid penetrates our skin. We don't die. Um, you could use a tool for that. I'm using God's tool. Um, capers are gonna go right in. Our uh, pepinas, or our salted pumpkin seeds, otherwise known as in English, salted and roasted, right in. Our raisins are going to go right into our bowl. Mm. And then we can finish our vinaigrette, anchovies and garlic, a healthy spoonful of Dijon mustard. And the mustard and the anchovies, the, the protein in the mustard and the anchovies are going to help us to emulsify, meaning they're going to mix the olive oil and the vinegar in a way that it sticks together. So healthy spoonful of mustard. Mustard is gonna be an ingredient, a flavoring ingredient, not just whatever. I absolutely love Dijon mustard.
Our cauliflower has been roasting now for 17 minutes. We're going to take a peek and pull it out of the oven. Oh my gosh. Whew, so hot. You can see it's got a little bit of color, not a ton. I'm going to turn our oven off right away because it is smoldering hot in here. And we can see that where it's been touching the pan, it's got a little bit of color on there. It's kind of nicely roasted. We could just let this sit. Wow. Do you hear that sizzling? That is amazing. Just let this sit over here to cool. And I use these towels rather than a um, mat, a mitt when I take things out of the oven. The, every professional kitchen, you find people with like a side towel and that's what they use. You know, you take your towel, you fold it one, you don't just kind of scrunch it up and grab because then there might be a thin spot. You fold it one, two, three times. And that is enough to really insulate yourself against anything that's super duper hot and hold it. Um, if the towel is wet at all, the moisture will boil on the outside, steam through, and then condense on your hand and burn you really terribly. So be careful to only use a dry towel. I trust this more than the oven mitts, which tend to melt if I'm like in a commercial kitchen environment. I like to get stuff hot and it can melt through a mitt, which are often made of plastic or um, non-natural fibers. Cotton towels are the best. So you have mustard, anchovies, garlic, and we're going to add our red wine vinegar. We can give this a whisk together. And the basic ratio of a vinaigrette is one third vinegar to two thirds oil. And that should be the right ratio to give you the kind of like right seasoning. One third vinegar, two thirds oil will give you the right like acidity to richness. We're gonna whisk and really slowly drizzle our olive oil in while we whisk really fast. And if you've got a, um, one of those emulsion blenders or one of those like little immersion uh, blenders, those are great to, to make this process a lot easier. The truth is we're not making a lot of vinaigrette and it's pretty easy. So again, I don't want to use a really expensive, rich, heavy, flavorful olive oil because it can clash with the red wine vinegar. But what you'll see is you can start, you can actually see in there that you've got some olive oil that's emulsified in the center and then some that's kind of just floating around, but when I whisk it, it comes together. And you can tell if you've emulsified something properly, if you dip your finger in there, you can see that it kind of stays together. And it tastes like one thing. It's not like, oh, that's greasy. No, that's vinegary. So, I'm just to give this a quick mix. You start out with just a drizzle. As you go, you can go a little bit faster because once you've started the emulsification, it should hold together fairly easily. And if you have a really perfect emulsification, it can sit in the fridge for like a week and stay emulsified. In this case, this would probably break down. I haven't done a perfect job, but it'll last long enough for me to mix our salad and make it very delicious. And that is the end of step two. Step three, we're gonna mix and season. So, um, using our handy dandy oven mitt, because this is still a bit warm, we're gonna kinda dump our roasted cauliflower in with our raw and all of our herbs, our raisins and our pumpkin seeds. And then, we're gonna season this with our vinaigrette. Any anchovies and garlic. I'm just gonna give it a little, little mix. Mm. And then we're gonna give it a quick toss. And ideally, I don't wanna break all those kind of like beautiful larger pieces of raw cauliflower that we've made. So I'm gonna just kind of gently give this a toss as gently as possible. Um, and 
the most important part, no matter how great a recipe is or how perfectly um, it's been tested, depending upon the size of the cauliflower, the relative humidity, the type of salt you're using, the type of oil and vinegar you're using, so many different factors are involved in, um, and your personal taste, in, in proper seasoning. So even if, a, even if the recipe is, is really well tested, often the difference between an absolutely delicious salad and one that's just kind of banal and bland um, is a pinch of salt or, or, or just a drizzle of, of seasoning, vinegar. So number one most important piece of the puzzle whenever we're making a salad is we're going to give it a taste. So kind of grab all the components, make sure I get raisins, some capers, some raw and roasted cauliflower. Mm. When I'm tasting to season, that's very good by the way, when I'm tasting to season, I have to be careful because remember you're going to eat multiple bites and vinegar and salt kind of build. So if you think it's perfectly seasoned, it might be a little bit over seasoned. You want it to be slightly under seasoned for one bite so that if you're eating a whole plate of it, it won't be too much. In this case, the salt is perfect. I can taste the salt. Remember that the longer that it sits, the salt is going to absorb into the cauliflower so it won't be as apparent. But it could use another just tiny splash of vinegar. So feel free to give it a little splash of vinegar. And if I'm serving this on a buffet or as like a potluck, if I'm bringing it somewhere, um, and this happens a lot in the restaurant setting, where we'll make a salad like this, we'll mix it beforehand. And then it'll sit around for a few hours. Before I serve it, I'll throw it back in the bowl, a sprinkle of salt and a little bit of vinegar, and that'll kind of bring it back to life and give it that pop, especially because all the salt will have been absorbed into the center, and that extra salt on the outside will tickle your tongue first, wake your taste buds up, and say, hello, is that cauliflower that's come knocking? That's extremely delicious. It's such a simple salad. It takes 30 minutes and it's amazing. I'm just gonna leave it all over my hands. Be sure to like and subscribe, check us on Instagram, and download the Project Foodie app on the iOS App Store. I hope you've enjoyed this Project Foodie cook along and I hope you'll join us for more. If you want to make our delicious cauliflower salad, you're going to need the following ingredients. We have some scallions or green onions, some Italian flat leaf parsley. We have anchovies. Anchovies actually lend it a really delicious depth of flavor. If you're one of those people that doesn't love anchovies, I promise you, you will not actually be able to taste the anchovy. It really just gives it a kind of like earthy, full round saltiness. But ditch the anchovies if you don't want to use them. It's going to be fine. We have um, raisins, any type of raisin will work. Currants work well as well, dried currants. Some salted and roasted pumpkin seeds. Um, important to get roasted salted ones or if you can only find raw, salt them and roast them yourself. Dijon mustard, garlic, salt, red wine vinegar, a good quality, light, extra virgin olive oil. Nothing too overpowering that would make a kind of like bitter clashing flavor with the vinegar. We have some capers. Salted capers are, are my favorite. Most, most often I use salted capers. Um, in this case, I'm using pickled capers because they go well with the vinaigrette. They're vinegary, the vinaigrette's vinegary, vinegar, vinegar, vinegar. Black pepper, cauliflower, which is the star of the show. Cauliflower seasons in the fall, you can find all different types of shapes and colors of cauliflower. Really, really beautiful and all of them work well. They're interchangeable. I like to use a mix of different cauliflowers to kind of like give it a really vibrant, beautiful, um, look, the reality is they all kind of taste almost exactly the same and this one is the most often available. It's the kind of least expensive and you can find it year round so white cauliflower works well. If you want to make our delicious raw and roast cauliflower salad, you are going to need the following tools. A knife and cutting board, a tasting spoon, measuring spoons and measuring cups, a small and large mixing bowl, a small roasting pan, and a hui whisk. 
If you only have a large whisk, that's fine as well, provided that it fits in the Hui bowl.